All right, well, my name is Brian Edwards. Um, I, I think I'm maybe still Dutch on the uh, ProMongers list. Uh, so I've been a lurker on there forever. Um, and I've, this is the first time I've done one of these, so um, bear with me a little bit. I'm not really a Pro Ninja, but I do use it and work. I can make my living mostly as a freelance. Um, systems architect and database engineer. So I live in the database space a lot. Um, I do a lot of integration work for companies um, between third-party databases, making things talk to each other, moving data around, and Pearl's good for that. I also um, have occasion to do presentation layer stuff. I'm not a UX developer, UI developer, um, but um, everybody's got to be able to build up a web app and get stuff going. So um, found Dancer a few years ago and started going into here. I never really jumped into the Catalyst part of it. I did some stuff, legacy stuff a long time ago on CGI app, uh, but um, <laughs> and it's pretty, pretty intensive stuff uh, that I build in there that I'm not sure I want to go back to. But Dancer's kind of fun. Okay, so Pearl Dancer, Pearl Dancer Org. Um, right up here, Pearl Dancer Org. This is a uh, what is Dancer? Simple but powerful web framework. About if you're familiar with Ruby on Rails, Sinatra is kind of a lightweight, sexy Ruby thing, and they make no qualms about touting how they copied largely from Sinatra for Dancer. So that was the inspiration for that. Um, Dancer has all kinds of plugins, and um, you can read the docs on their website here. There's all kinds of things. Down here there's a cookbook, a cheat sheet, tutorial. You can jump out to CPAN and go through Dancer out there. Twitter, at Pearl Dancer. And right now, as they've done in years past, they're populating their advent calendar for 2013. So these are just a bunch of little daily things that they'll do out here that we'll talk about the Dancer space as well as put um, tutorials and little talks and things on there. We'll go back to 2010 um, and the article list is actually down below. I don't, I'm not quite, have a cracked code on this layout of what those numbers are, but the article list here is, so you can use DBIX class, REST services, all that. So you can jump into these little things, um, write your own plugins. Um, that was 2010. The other years are up here. That is on Advent, and I'm going to lose my ability to see here. Advent.pearldancer.org, 2013 will populate by default. So, you can do that. so anyway, I you can read all that stuff. Um, I'm going to jump out of this and go over to a Kubuntu session and we'll just start scaffolding it up. Um, what, let me see here. Got test. Um, finding this wall here very inconvenient. <laughs> we have more room back here. Move around. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to create a little directory called test here, and we'll scaffold underneath there. So um, there's nothing in there right now. If I've already installed most of, uh, hopefully, the dependencies, so we don't have to wait for that. You can app get it on Ubuntu, Kubuntu. Um, you can see pan minus. You can do whatever you like to do to get this on there. Um, Dancer dash V should come back and tell me what version of Dancer I'm running. Dancer 1.3114. 1 um, 
so if I use the scaffolding piece of Dancer, then I can just go ahead and create um, the base structure for an application. We're going to call this application Brew Boys, and we'll do Dancer A Brew Boys. And it should go ahead and build out the uh, base structure for me there. Um, so what it's done is it's gone ahead and put the uh, base app for running in the app.pl. Uh, conf basic configuration on YML out there, config.yml. Uh, a couple of environments. We're going to run mostly under development YML today. You can switch it to production. Uh, and you can then change the logging and all kinds of things in there. Uh, the app itself that we're doing is under lib in brewboys.pm. There's some make stuff. And then public is a uh, subset of directories uh, for your CSS, your JavaScript, images, um, tests, and then Views is the main other area that we'll be working on there. There's layouts, which kind of drive the um, base structure. These are .tt. We're going to be using template toolkit today. Um, Dancer works with a bunch of different template systems. It comes by default using its own simple template system. We're going to switch that, and I'll show you that in a second. Views. Um, moving back from layouts, views is then where we'll be dropping um, the content piece of our templates in there uh, in this simple application that we're doing today. Um, like I said, this is Kubuntu, so if you like that, great. If you don't, I'm sorry, but I'll be popping in and out of it. And um, I'm going to use Kate to kind of do this today. Um, the KDE Advanced Text Editor is probably what that stands for. Anyway, that was it. Um, so I've created the app, and I've shown you that. Actually, I'm not going to touch it right now. I'm just going to go in and fire it up. So under here, bin has got something going on. If I do Perl, bin app.pl, it's going to launch its own little server. You probably want to see what's in the app. Let's take a look at that real quick so not much there use Perl use Dancer use Brew Boys which was our um, module under uh, lib and then uh, dance so it's running on 3000 and it's going to tell me that it's listening on 3000 out here on localhost. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe that ever when it pops up Toshiba. And that's my base app running right there. So um, that quickly I do it. Now, I am going to stop this and do one other thing real quick. So uh, this is kind of the, we're in the development paradigm, so it's going to throw a bunch of other stuff that you can look at and see what it's all doing. It's trying to match. What it's trying to do, a big focus with Dancer is on routes. Um, gets and posts and you set all up all your routes which would be the URL that you're going against and they pretty much equate to subs that you build out in your module and you can use different modules and chain them together we won't be going that far today um, that was just doing running the app itself as is and using its standalone server I can launch this as a Okay, that's not going to do it. Okay. Plaque up. And I'm going to use plaque. Does anybody know what rack is 
in Ruby. Jay, what's, <coughs> what's Rack? Okay. Um, Clack is a Perl implementation of Ruby. Uh, Python has the equivalent WSGI, maybe? Um, am I on the right track there? So this is PSGI, and um, so it's a way to run these apps. I need a better programmer to help me. Uh, it's just under that. different web servers, essentially. Right. It's a common web server interface. So app itself, if you launch it, will run Perl's web server. Using Plaque, I can run this under, I know a lot of things I've done is run it under Starman, which is a Perl web server that can handle a bunch of bunch of requests and redirect it through Nginx. Um, I just did an Apache one today, so it, it's all over the place. Right, right. So, so what we're doing, the reason we're using Plaque right now is that we're going to use what's called the shotgun loader. Um, for plaque on here, well, yeah, maybe, maybe. I'll. Look at that! Look how smart I am. That helps me. So I got old school notes here. And if this works, then okay. So PSGI server is running and accepting connections. Um, that doesn't really change anything out here. Except that when I make changes to the code, shotgun loader is going to pick them up. I don't have to restart my web server every time I do it. Um, it's fun, but I didn't think that would be that much fun for you guys to watch. So we'll jump out here and we'll start looking at the main configuration. Of this config YML file in the base directory of our application out here. Okay, so my application name right there, Brew Boys. So if we want to, um, we'll just leave that. We can change that if we want. It, it, these these settings carry through to the application via the settings keyword within Dancer. They're also accessible to your templates. Um, via the settings hash, I believe, and I'll show you that once we get out there. Um, the main thing to look at right now is we're going to switch from template simple. Simple is the default very basic template engine that's built in. We're going to shut that off and we're going to come down here and put on template toolkit which I think you have to install separately too. I think I had to do that also. Okay, so now that I've changed that, if I hit a reload out here, then it's going to expect to process everything by default through Template Toolkit. I can change the template engine on the fly within the sub when I throw it out, and I'll show you that later. Um, we could do JSON or anything else that we want to do there. This looks like crap. And I don't know why they do it this way, but but I, I probably know why they do it this way. But the built-in things with the template, well, let's go ahead and jump into views, layouts. If you saw right here on config, our default layout. Default layout to use for your application. To use layouts main. Okay, so it's going to use this main.tt. Even though we were on simple um, template before. So this is the first part of it. And it'll throw all this stuff out. These are the variables under simple template engine. They're enclosed with greater than percent, percent greater than. Okay, so it's going to pick up these things. Request is going to be an internal dancer one. Settings care set. Settings care set is right here, UTF 8. Okay, so anyway, it's all percent and greater than less than. And then content right here gets replaced by whatever you have in the views that you're loading. Sorry I'm going a little bit quick, but anyway. This looks 
like crap is the bottom line. The reason that it looks like crap right now is because by default in our config template toolkit is set to use probably what's normal for people to use template toolkit. Bracket greater than greater than bracket is our closing tags. And we know that in the template that's out there by default it's using the greater than less than. Long story short, we'll just go through and change those things and save it. And now all that stuff that's already there is instead of saying content, it's actually going to get populated by content. Run as a variable and pull it back out. So now we're actually on template engine. It's throwing a little bit of debug stuff in its sidebar over here. Um, template engine has changed the template toolkit right there. Um, one other thing on plaque when you're doing it, there's all this plaque middleware that you can load along with this and you can put it in config YML. Um, plaque debug middleware, plaque authentication middleware, all kinds of plaque modules that are out there um, and they hook into Dancer. So. Okay, so that was template toolkit. We did that change. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layout and I'm going to call it brew.tt. I'll put it in the brew boys views layouts brew.tt and save it there and then I'm going to go back into my config until I don't want to use main anymore jump me over to brew it picks up the TT by default um, Right now, there's nothing in there. I bet it looks really funny. Yep, there's nothing in there. So, if we start with this as a base, <coughs> our current main, put it in brew, and this says title brew boys was actually populated by the app. Let's call it brew boys tt just for kicks. And come out and reload. There's my Brew Boys TT up here. Okay, so what I've done there is I've changed my config. I'm using a different layout engine now. And you can flip layout engines on the fly too. So we'll go ahead and take a look in here at what's the actual app doing. This is the package, and this is all that we got right now. So, package brew boys use dancer. It's our version statement. Basically, we've got to find one route there, which is um, the default or the back or the forward slash the root template index return true. Uh, so, when you fire off that. And it returns the index. If I put something that's not there, it's probably going to have a problem. It's going to return a void. It's got a void by default. Uh, and they're a little bit hokey, but they're out there just to have something out there. Um, those default error messages, where are those? Public. Public. So you've got a 404 and a 500 HTML. Um, just throw up a simple one there, right there. It's not as bad as, and you can redirect that as well. Um, okay, so brew. All right, so what we'll do now is we are on our config. Okay, so we're using template toolkit. We're using the layout brew. Brew layout right now. Just putting our content out there. And, uh, and it's returning index, which under views looks like this. 
And this is all their stuff. Join the community, browse the documentation, your applications environment. That's all their stuff. We're going to borrow two things from this CSS because I'm not a designer. Um, div ID page and div ID content just for kicks. So what we'll do is make a new document and we'll call this BB home.tt but I don't want it to be in layouts I want it to be in views so I'm back here so that's underneath views right there and there's nothing in it right now index um, sorry bear with me a second I'm going to jump around a little bit and grab some code so we can maybe move a little bit quicker. All right. What I'm going to do is go in. Since I'm using brew.tt and I don't want to do certain things every time, I'm going to put this stuff up here ahead of time, put my content down, and close my div. So all I have to worry about in this very simple CSS layout is populating whatever goes in content, which is going to be my view that I'm using. Um, Brewboys is set to return index right now. So we're going to change that to do BB Home. Save it. Pull it up. Okay. So there's really not anything in that BB Home yet. It's blank, but since I've modified my template or my layout, I'm sorry, my layout. Every time I run my a template out to you by default, I'm going to throw this stuff in there. It's going to say Brew Boys on. It's going to say Shirt App. It's going to put an HR. It's going to close it. So if I put in Brew and I, if I want to get rid of the footer powered by Dancer, I can cut that out of there on my layout. Load it up. Sorry, it's gone. Okay. All right, and then so if I go into my file that I'm serving you, this is BB Home TT. Save it. Reload it. There's my stuff. Okay. Um, tremendously simple, but that's nothing new. Um, BB Home Reload, no method copy, so okay. Okay, so let me fill out BB Home TT a little bit more. stuff out there. To do this I'm going to need to bring some images over. Um, so that will be done using the wonderful KDE Dolphin File Manager.
So in base images, and this is under public image, base images, I've got some really great pictures here. So this was an old road trip to a Missouri game, and our wives were thrilled that we made shirts up that said still brewing on them for whatever reason. I can't really remember why. That's when we were good and could beat Missouri. Um, so these say still brewing, and we're going to do a little app where we change the, what the Brew Boys shirts say here. Um, so using the power of GIMP, I've gone through and really awesomely removed the lettering from some of these shirts, and that's our base image set that we're going to play around with right now. Um, so what this should do, what I've done is I've gone ahead and populated bbhome.tt. So again, brewboys.pm through config is set to use brew as the layout. It's going to throw that stuff up. It's going to throw content, which is based on whatever template I'm returning, which in this case should throw up a form and put my images out there. So let's see if that's true. Well, it looks like it is. Okay. So two little images to start with. Um, so you would assume that now there's a... This would indicate to me that there's another route that needs to be developed. So we're going to do form action start. Right now probably going to puke on me. Because it can't find start. So that route is not there. The other thing to know that we're using a form. So we'll go ahead and just ignore that we're using a form. We'll go to app. I'm sorry, Brew Voice. Okay, so let's copy this because I'm too lazy to type. Actually, I'm not too lazy to type get start and execute sub. Sorry, two space indent there and throw back start. Okay, huh? Is what not the default? Yeah. Um, start's not there yet. So let's make J happy. We'll save this as start.tt. I don't think start's a reserve word, but. No, I'm just curious because Catalyst uses the name of the sub. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is all anonymous, though, so. Yeah. Well, I guess you could base on URL. We'll put template start.pp for this. Save it. Okay. So there is a start.tt, and Brewboy should throw that out under the brewtt layout. So start should go in here. So when I do that and I fire it off, it still can't find it. Okay talking about routes and the way that we can do routes the main way that we can do routes are gets and posts and actually when I'm coming from that form, form I'm doing a post so I'm going to do a post start and post start and get start are two different things and we'll execute two different ways depending on how you call it so if I save that then There's my template start.tt. Okay. Okay, so the post is okay, working there. Okay, I'm gonna jump back over. Does everybody get that part of it? There are other methods, um, other HTTP methods that you can use with um, 
your routes. Yeah, post delete. Um, put. Put. Yep. Yeah. Patch one? I don't think it's ever used practically. Yeah, but. not. I mean, the majority is going to be a get and a post, but um, the put maybe. Uh, there is another one that we won't look at today, which is Ajax. So if you. How do they have this out here? The routes. Gets. New stuff. Uh, and you can you can put any. So route handler that would match any methods right there. Post get whatever. Uh, we're just going to be touching on getting post today. Uh, just so we can get through this, feel free to go out and read about it if you want to dig into that. Okay. I'm going to jump back now to the config file and I'm going to add. Storable session out here. I've already got a directory, but we'll clear it. Or maybe I don't. Okay, maybe I wiped it out. So if I jump to my old one, session storable, um, we're going to store session information as files. There's uh, ways to do it in a database, Mongo, um, within memory, which I think it does by default. Um, we'll pick up on a reason why we're, I guess, using it this way in a little bit if we get far enough within that image app. So temp brewboy sessions um, should be where our files are going to dump. There's nothing out there right now. Um, did I save that? Save it. Uh, reload. That's reposting my post. But there's a session right there. So there's all kinds of good stuff in there and you can actually see kind of a session ID right out there too. <coughs> Simple file storage. And so it manages all the cookies and yeah, it handles everything. If I um, clear it, everything right now, go back here. So my old one Uh, there's only one right now. I don't think you hit enter. But. Yeah, I didn't. So there's only one right now, and that's going to end with a 5420. So we'll fire it off here. I've just cleared everything here. It shouldn't have any record of me. So there's my session for that one right there. Um, so all kinds of good stuff are available in session, and it's really fun and easy to get to. Um, session set up now. Um, this says enter your name to get started. This is just to play with session a little bit. Um, remember that we are posting to 
the start route, which is right here, and all it does right now is return template start. So I throw some more interesting stuff, at least to me, in there. Um, so if I upgrade my start post routine, So if there aren't any parameters in the username, the username is one of my form fields, name, username, input. And I get to it by looking at the params hash, param username. Um, you guys are really good at Perl, will have your own way of doing this, and I'm doing it wrong. We know about Perl, there's more than one way to do it. So I can do that, I can do whatever. Um, I'm going to have a lot of inconsistencies in this code today. So live with it and tell me a better way to do it if you feel you have to. So if there are no params, username, then shoot me back to the start again. Otherwise, set within my session that little file that's out there in my username to be this param which I can then get to it from other places. By default, I'm going to pull a get request on, a, uh, on this redirect. Redirect is going to say get start. I don't have a get start. I only have a post start. So what I'm going to do, sorry, is build a get start routine. that looks like this. So when I hit my form, I'm going to hit the start route on a post. It's going to shoot you back to here if there's nothing in the username. Otherwise, it's going to set username within the session, redirect you to the default get start route here, where it's going to pull username out of session right here. And if my session name, username, is not equal to Bob, I'm going to shoot you back to here. Otherwise, I'm going to give you with the template start, um, which is right here. But it doesn't say anything cool. Um, so let's make that a little bit cooler before we pull it. Um, So I'll wipe out this start, and I'll put that right there. So this is template toolkit, and remember I changed my toolkit paradigm on this one to not use bracket percent, but to use uh, brave, or, uh, greater than percent, less than percent. And so that's going to hit session, which is the big, uh, big nasty hash for everything that's in session, and pull out username, which I'm setting right here session username params username okay so we are getting parameters via the params hash we're throwing them into session right here and we're pulling them out of session over here if all works well we're having access to that on the template side of things by doing the hash here and just going through the dotted and locking it down can you pass other parameters other than just session variables you sure can um, and I'll show you that in a little bit, where you can, you have session variables, but if I come into, when I throw my template out, so if I, I, if I were to take this line where I'm feeding out a template, and I'll just throw it down here for now, I could actually do template start, and I can put another 
parameter like ad hoc or whatever I want or put as you know uh, an array or a hash whatever I want and I can fill that out And then I'll be able to pick those up. Well, I'm sorry, folks. There, by just grabbing those parameters out there. So, and that would be not by going through session, but by going through uh, percent ad hoc. So I think if I'm in template, then I could just grab it by, or if you prefer, if you have things set up that way. depending on what we set in config YML. Does that answer the question? And I'll show you a better example here in a minute of that. So right now I'm just grabbing things from the session. I'm transferring state and everything else through session. Um, so if I don't enter Bob, I'm probably not going to get anywhere. Um, one other thing to help us understand this, uh, maybe two things. I'm going to go to my layout and I'm going to put a little thing here at the end that will let us take a look at the session if it works. Yeah, as I told you I didn't believe you. So if I come up here and go to my layout and after my meat of my stuff, if I this works, I'm going to use dumper within template and take a look at the session. And we'll see if that actually works. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Well, let's just kind of go clear everything out. And we'll jump out here. Okay, so enter your name to get started. Fred, what does Fred do? Fred kicks me back because Fred doesn't equal Bob. Um, so it's posting. <coughs> right here, it's setting my param. It didn't like it. So it's shooting me back here. Now, <coughs> remember I put that dumper in there. So if I jump down here, that's actually the content of my session that's out here. 6508. Six, 6508 is the top one. So that's the one right there that's wrong. Normally, you know, it handles itself. But my username, Fred's right there, and I can see it. Okay, so now I'm back. And Bob, what does Bob do? Okay, Bob, pick a shirt picture. Okay. So, username's Bob. We're passed through. Pick a shirt picture. Here, right here. So if you can see down at the bottom, what that link is, is enter shirt words. Brew Boys front, enter shirt words, Brew Boys back. Okay, so this is just kind of the name of the image. Um, very unsophisticated at this point in time. Um, that is coming from my start and my link right here. And so the route that I'm putting on it is enter shirt words, brew boys front. And to be honest with you, I probably should have done this. So that goes off of root. Um, so I don't have this route right now. And that's going to tank on me if I do it. 
Sorry, this is the void. Okay. I wonder what it's doing back here. If I look at all this stuff, um, somewhere it's going to tell me that it couldn't find shirt. Inner shirt words. Trying to match inner shirt words, inner shirt words, inner shirt words. Response 304. And actually, it's trying to match inner shirt words, Brew Boys front. Um, what I'm going to do now is throw that route out there. So, you know, it, it would seem that I need to get sorry yeah I think we call it enter shirt words okay. but we also called it brew boys front or if we were on the other one, we did Brew Boys Back, real creative. Not terribly useful. What we're going to put instead is, I mean, you could certainly hand code all of that. But what we're going to do is come out here and start chunking parameters in place in the route. So what would, the way we're going to do that is by building our route like this. So I'm going to do a enter shirt words as soon as I hit this and I put the colon there image name. What it's doing is putting making image name a parameter that I can put in. <coughs> you can get pretty extensive with this. You can do regex stuff. You can go in and now I can build another route, edit, and you know, have a mixture of them and have the reg axes and have all that. I'm not going to get into that today. You can take a look at that. That's parameterizing your routes. Um, I don't know if I can jump to it here. Or if they have a good explanation of it here. Probably over in the tutorial. And of course I'm probably should be giving you a tutorial. Let me just go back to giving you an overview. So what I'm doing, take my word for it, enter shirt words, and then whatever you put there is going to come in as image name. So if I don't enter anything behind it, I'm going to go back to my root. Otherwise, I'm going to set another session variable image name to be my param image name. I'm going to do a template, enter shirt words. I don't have enter shirt words now, so let me just make a default template. Throw that out there. Okay, so. Inner shirt words image name. So the way that that's coming at it is going to be from the URL that's coming in. I got to do Bob. And then right here, my link is inner shirt words brew boys front. <coughs> so brew boys front will be image name. Down here, brew boys back. In my session data, there is no image name right now. So I'm going to hit that. And I picked up image name right there through my route. 
and that's by doing this part right here. Everybody clear on that? Cool. Okay. Okay, so let's build out inner shirt words a little bit more here. Um, so that maybe we can actually do something like that. All right, so inner shirt words is going to throw out my image name, which is picking up session. Brew Boys front, Brew Boys back. It's going to then access the image using the session as part of the name in the image tag right here. So it's going to pull that in there. And it's going to throw me up a form. Haas, Dutch, and Chief. So you can change Haas's shirt word, Dutch's shirt word, or Chief Dad's shirt word. And then you print. So that should pull up whichever one I go to. This is Brew Boy's back. Okay. So that's the back. And it's picking up image name for my route. This is not a post. This is a get. So I can just access that. And I can link it. And if I do front, I pull up my front image. And then down below, I've changed to Brew Boys front right here. Okay. So when we post this form print, it's going to do a post to enter shirt words. I have enter shirt words get, but I don't have the route for that. Yes, sir. Elsewhere you have a business rule that says it's not popped and you got to be bought. Can I get here even though I'm not Bob? Or do I know that URL? I can come straight here and I'm, my name's Jay, right? And that business rule isn't being enforced? Right, that's not being enforced there. What um, I should show you, Jay, but I probably don't have time. But I will mention it. Um, what's actually easier to do, and this is a different app that we'll jump into a little bit later. It's more full, much more full blown app. But I could put hooks out here, and this is one I built, which is a hook before. When we were building it out, we did. We had it up on a site and we just had a, we were forcing a login for us, a public facing site, but for a while we did a dev site, which is a simple login. Um, you can have hooks before, before you render a template, after, after you render a template. Um, and those are all, of course, described in the documentation, but if you're looking for it, I think before before hook so adds a hook at some position so hook before serializer before you render file before just general before so it's going to hit before you do anything you can you will run out and run this version this right here the only thing we're doing in this since we have that commented out is we're going to update our date time and if we have items we're going to throw that out there but if we didn't have a username before, in other words, if we never had a session and this was uncommented out, it was going to shoot people over to log in. It was also going to save what the way that they're coming in on. Um, and I don't want to do that redirect to log in if they're already requesting me to go to log in. So that's where we can actually read the URL we request. And um, if they're already at log in, we don't have to do this redirect right there. But um, so this login part then would get executed whenever you don't have a session user if that's uncommented. Path is an example here that I'm setting that additional variable, for example. 
and the other component that you can feed to template or one of the other components is this layout so in this project it uses um, a layout j burglar one on this particular route on the login route when i feed them this i'm actually overriding our main layout and i'm putting dev site login right here as a different layout so you swap out the regular menu bars and whatever just right yeah that's simpler absolutely i don't want all the all the advertising agency css crap or anything else so that does that answer your question does that help yeah, yeah i didn't there's, there's a lot of holes in this and this would be one of them um if we did but normally we would put a before hook in there if we were really doing this right okay no nope, that's not it all right so we got to build the post route Oh, this is okay. <laughs> Probably more than I want to go to right now, but I will throw it out there and then we'll just comment it out. Okay. All right. So what is my post post route do now? Okay, my post route, remember what form we're coming from here. We're coming from a form which looks like this. So give me Haas's shirt word, Dutch's shirt word, and Chief's shirt word. Okay. And it's gonna put those in Haas word, Dutch word, Chief word. Those parameters will be accessible through the params hash. I'm going to initialize the variable and put a hash out there that I'm then going to feed back to my template print, print shirt. Okay. Let me make a print shirt template. So print shirt is going to pull from the shirt words variable, which is not in session, but it's being fed right here. And it's going to consist of everything that's going into that hash right here that I'm pulling from params. Um, and then print shirt right now is just going to show, throw those out there, hopefully. So. If we do that, one, two, three. Okay. So that's not in the session. It's being passed to the template. The mechanism by which I'm doing that is the mechanism I'm accessing it by and the me mechanism I'm passing it by is right here. Okay. So, it's not really fun. I didn't change anything on the shirt. So now we're going to get kind of funky and do something not terribly useful either. But this is where I'm going to get a little bit fast because normally you would put some of this stuff in a database that we're about to do or config.yml. 
my session ID. I'm going to pull the ID from the session. If you remember all the session files that are being stored, <coughs> sorry, out here, we're going to pull this session ID out. We're going to use that because we're actually going to be writing to the file system in a minute. My image name, I'm pulling out of the session, which I have image name right here, Brew Boys Front. Remember, I've copied those pictures over. Um, Image magic, what's image magic? Okay. Um, image magic is a library for image manipulation. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's got all kinds of fun ways to access it. And I've, I've seen it in, you know, commercial software. I'm sure you have to. It's open source. Pearl Magic is what we're going to be using. Um, composed images, the text on them, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, decorate stuff, all that. So we're just going to use that today for whatever reason. Image Magic. So we're using Pearl Magic. I need to include that, I think. So I'm going to put that in my application up at the top. Probably annoying somebody by the way I'm doing it, but I'm doing it this way. Anyway, it's out there, and I had to install it to get it in place. So Image Magic's in there. So now, this is not about Image Magic; it's about Pearl Dancer. But we're going to throw it at you anyway. These are kind of things that we're going to use in Image Magic. We're just going to tell it gravity's a center. This is how we position stuff in there. We are writing text on an image using Image Magic, so we're annotating its method down here. And we're going to use some of these things. Kind of tell it where to put stuff. <coughs> in a prior incarnation of this type of app, I had full application path in the setting. We're going to hard code it here just for kicks. Um, just, I don't know why, but we are. Briefly, when I post this, again, I'm posting three words to this route, enter shirt words. I'm grabbing them through the params hash. I'm going to create a new file. I've got a true type font that I need it to use. So I'm going to grab that. And put that in my directory under Brew Boys. I'm also going to create a directory out here. Okay, I've already got it. Temp. Okay. Good. Okay, so I'm going to grab a font. I'm going to feed it my input file. And I've grabbed image name from the session up here. So I'm going to pull my file. I'm giving it the full path name here. Remember the base images, image name, blank. And those are, what that looks like is right here. Okay, so my blank and my blank. It's grabbing Brew Boys front or Brew Boys back. It's appending underscore blank. Blank is the one where we took the code off or the uh, words off there. Um, I'm going to make an output file. I'm going to give it a full path name of a directory that I can write to underneath my application. I'm going to append the session ID, a hyphen, a dash, the image name, and JPEG when I write this using Image Magic. I'm going to create a new 
or I've already created my image magic object. I'm going to have it read my input file, my blank, and basically I'm going to incorrectly throw some words on the page. And I'm just using my font. I've got some point size I'm messing with. We did geometry, gravity center, if you remember from Image Magic. So our, my geometry is going to pull it negative x, positive x, negative y, positive y from the center of my image. I can rotate my text a little bit. And then I'm going to feed it my parameter that I pulled off my form right here. I'm going to run the annotate three times. It's going to put those images or those sub images out there, the text out there. It's going to hopefully write the file and then it's going to return my print shirt. And print shirt is going to contain a link here. to the image that we just wrote. The session ID, the hyphen, the session, Im the image name, and then JPEG there. So I'm um, pulling out two session variables there to build my image that hopefully I've written if everything goes well. So we'll do that and we'll say Haas's shirt or word Haas shirt Oscars, Missouri. Yeah. So Image Magic did its thing. I don't have it lined up right. You could write a little CRUD app where you could shift around each one of those little geometries, rotations, font sizes, and all that. Um, but hopefully that gives you a little overview of the routes and all that. Now I'll jump out here because what we actually did um, was take this to another level and that was the application I'm showing you here was something called Jersey Burglar and this was for a client. We did this last summer. Um, it's no longer active um, but we ran it for a season last year. Um, this is a Omaha Prints, a printing company here in town. And um, so they do print on demand as well. And this was kind of a, a project that they had going. It was kind of fun to work through permissions from the NCAA and the, and the university and all that to actually get this off the ground. Uh, none of this stuff is my um, doing on the front end. But what they have an application that does web to print but it really wasn't built for um, consumer and public and it wasn't it wasn't skinned and we used Pearl Dancer um, largely to skin that front end um, while Image Magic was floating around in the back of that thing we had to bring Image Magic out to the front and I'll show you the functionality there for what we wanted to do with this but what we wanted to do was build a front end to their application which would use all the CSS and the marketing stuff that you see here and allow you to jump on it quickly enter your name and then see a preview of what a bunch of the the uh, web to print products that they had were available um, and then inside of it we use www.mac to go ahead and populate the actual forms on the website and plug it in after we did an XML punch out and created a session and so that was all kind of really fun type of stuff but anyway right or wrong that's what we did so this is Pearl Dancer right here running behind this and um, you can kind of see simply routes up here uh, Polini no you can't use Polini huh. you had to reject current coaches, players, and all that type of stuff. But let's go ahead and say OMG code. 
And then, of course, what we've got on the back end is what you basically saw in a nutshell here. Now I'm in my choose image. Um, and if you look down here at the URL, it's pulling up session images is the route that it's fulfilling. And then it's got kind of a similar thing going on where it's grabbed somebody's session ID and then it's um, thrown in. That's the black shirt image. Um, this is the red is the new black. If you look down below, there's my particular session and uh, new black. I can start up another browser out here and go to the same thing. And let's see. Maybe I can. So out here, and you can see that the session ID there is ending in a 9118. Over here, session ID is ending in the 9965, so it's doing that. The storage, storable session and the, we were running this front end on a, not a huge Linode up uh, on Linode's cloud, and um, they handled all the, all the session traffic with no problem. So if I want this one, if I say I want this image, then I can get it in a poster or a schedule or a scorecard. Go ahead and put that out there. This is select items, image ID 3, four of those. Simply add it to the cart, OMG code, another name. Oh, you can't do that. So I can do this. <laughs> and I can put Larry out there too and get him. Uh, there he looks like a badass. And there's my cart. And then again, you know, we've got some session stuff going. So that's all. I mean, I hear when we do this checkout, then we do our big nasty punch out. And all that. So there's our card items. That's actually calling that before hook. That's some of the image magic stuff we were doing there. We actually had this all in a huge. Um, active images and all that. So I can do images and then I just get an array of hashes and access them out that way and I can go through each one all through the settings paradigm. But that's all I need on the app site. Is that what they sent to the printer too, or did or they somebody plug it in Photoshop and do the actual final press portion of it? It the software does it on their other, so they can actually do it. Do so they get a full res tip and everything. Like oh that. yeah, this is, and this is not. Yeah, these previews. Yeah, not. I mean, we put a watermark on there right or wrong. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that type of stuff, but. I mean, there's nothing to stop you from grabbing an image and taking it off. Okay. But you know, it's not a, it's not a um, live site anymore. Um, but I believe it's in revision to the next version of what they're going to do with it. So uh, it was kind of a proof of concept. Um, it was a fun application to do, and I don't think I've been able to get it up and running as fast um, without Dancer. Unless I use Rails or something else that's not Perl. But anyway, any questions? Anything else I can point you to on that? That's a quick, brutal overview of Dancer.